first explosion happened. About 10 or 15 seconds later, there was a second explosion. I can't begin to know. It's a nice moment here at the stadium as we stand united with the people of Boston. It was a feel-good moment at Yankee Stadium as New Yorkers showed their support by singing the theme song of their hated rivals, the Boston Red Sox. But no one was feeling very good as the day started at Boston FBI headquarters in the cart lab where agents had spent the night searching the chilling video for images of the terrorist. Uh, he was, was, was hidden in plain sight. We couldn't see anything that stuck out. You're tearing your hair out? Uh, yes, that would be one good way of describing it, yes, but just frustration. I talked to one of the agents who uh, reviewed the tape, and he said, you have no idea how many times I had to view the tape to get past the horror to see who it would be. That took a long time because you were just gripped by that. This is the man they were looking for but could not spot. It was very frustrating because we, we watched it over and over and over again. Any information that you have, any videos or photographs, could be helpful to this investigation. The clues they're looking for now is did somebody see a person put a bomb in a trash can, a mailbox, leave us a sack on the sidewalk? Somebody saw something, and that's what they're looking for right now. That's the most important clue that they could have. Tuesday, we get a call from the public from a person who said, you know, I was across the street taking pictures of, of my friend running, and, and the pictures were taken just immediately before the explosion, and we think that you might be interested in my photos. And we said, absolutely. That still photo combined with the video put, put the pieces of the puzzle together. FBI bomb technicians had determined where the bomb had detonated, and in that precise spot, they could now see a black backpack. Right there. That's the first time you saw that's that? That's the first time we saw that bag. We said that's going to be the bomb. And then we start to look around that location, of around the bag, of who could have been responsible or who that bag belonged to. Was it the man in the white hat? That might be our guy. And we went back to the, the video and synced them both up together. That was the aha moment. And, and we grabbed the executive management from the command post and brought him in and said, this is who we're looking for. Now it seems so obvious. You see him walking in about four and a half minutes beforehand. You see him with a backpack. You see him on a phone. You see him get to that point and just gently lead to the side and put the backpack on the ground. And then you fast forward to the moments just before the first blast and you see everybody react. Well, his reaction was slightly different. It wasn't as panicked. You could tell that he knew that that was about to happen. And then you start to count 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, and he starts to walk out back from the direction he came, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, and you get to 12. And just as he exits the frame, that second blast happens. But there were two bombs and two bombers. And at this point, the FBI only had one bomber identified, the one with the white baseball cap on backwards. Could he have set off both, you think? Um, at that point, we didn't know. So now the FBI team set out to backtrack the bomber in the white hat. Agents later created a mock-up model of the crime scene. This is an actual 3D model of the Boylston Street scene. Marking in yellow, all the surveillance cameras they knew were set up along Boylston Street. And these yellow dots are all cameras? CCTV cameras. So then we started looking backwards, and we play the tape backwards to make sure we see where he comes from. Going backwards, picked up first by the cameras at Walgreens. And we can see him coming from here. Then by the ATM camera at Bank of America, in front of the Back Bay Social Club. The next key piece of CCTV footage we get is here at Whiskey's Restaurant. Where White Hat is seen with another man wearing a black hat. And it's actually at Whiskey's where we first see them together. And so when you saw them here, then you knew that was the second person. Absolutely. That's where we have now black hat and white hat. That's essentially our second aha moment. Now we're looking for two bombers. Yet it turns out this key video came within minutes of being erased. The system at Whiskey's records over the previous day's images every 24 hours. On the day of the bombing, mm -hmm. cameras are rolling. Huh? Cameras are always rolling. The Whiskey's manager put in an urgent call to Boston police. 
You know, you need to get here right away because I don't know that it's going to not recycle on top of each other. Detectives raced to the restaurant and got here just in time to unplug the system and preserve this key video. Now, more than 3,000 federal agents and police were in the hunt. The FBI was conducting aerial surveillance on more than a dozen possible suspects in the Boston area. We were desperate. I mean, we were absolutely desperate to figure out who these guys were. The manifest of every international flight were scrubbed. We had no solid indication to say they were still in the area or even in the country or, or wherever. Then late on Tuesday, the photos of Black Hat and White Hat were run through the FBI's brand new billion dollar facial recognition software. It didn't get us anywhere, unfortunately. Manufacturers were boasting that the software could be used to match suspects under surveillance with official photos. That did not happen in Boston. Facial recognition software at that time was good to compare driver's license and passport photos to other driver's license and passport photos. It didn't help with the photos and the videos that we had. We do not know whether this is an act of an organization or an individual or individuals. As the FBI has more information, as our counterterrorism teams have more information, uh, we will make sure uh, to keep you and the American people posted. There was pressure, pressure from Washington, D.C. The, you know, the president's being briefed, you know, FBI headquarters, we're, we're working with them you know, hourly, and there's this constant check, where are we at, where are we at, where are we at? These people weren't killed in the blast, where are they going to be next? That and was the concern. That was the concern. What's next? Where are they?